Of course, choosing the right targeting options in a Google Ads campaign is crucial for success, but I would also argue that making sure you have the proper exclusions in place is just as important. So because of that, I want to talk about our five favorite features we use in Google Ads to make sure that we are excluding users we don't want to interact with our campaigns. For this video, I'm going to go in a particular order. And the first couple exclusion examples that we typically use involve your campaign settings. So here's the first scenario. And if you've been in the PPC industry for a while, odds are you've run into this scenario. But so many times, Michelle and I will have clients come to us saying, hey, I keep searching for my ads, but they don't show up. So then we ask, well, do you click on your own ads? And they're like, of course not. We don't want to pay for it. So then we have to explain, well, if you keep searching for something and you don't click on it, Google's going to think it's not relevant to what you're searching for. And then they're going to stop showing it to you. Believe it or not, I've actually had a client who knew that and he was still clicking on his own ads to try to boost relevancy and keep his click through rate higher. Both of those scenarios are not ideal and we try to be proactive on this. So in certain campaigns, you can add IP exclusions to make sure that your clients or potentially your boss or your coworkers aren't seeing your ads, depending on how often or the size of the company could save you some ad spend, but also it can help your performance. So for this example, you can either Choose a campaign with the drop down or head on next to one of your campaigns until the gear icon shows up and click on it. That'll also be your settings. I should mention if you choose any sort of campaigns from the drop down, you will then have to click on this settings option here. But I just want to go within one. Once this pops open, click on additional settings and then scroll down until you see IP exclusions. You can see we have some blurred out already. But in your case, you'd want to click to expand IP exclusions. Scrolling down again, and this is where you would add your IP exclusions. Now, collecting these is going to be different depending on the account. If you're an individual or just a very small shop, it's easy enough just to go to Google and say, what is my IP? Boom, it's going to pop up right away. There are other websites where you can find it. However, we've worked with clients that have multiple IPs within their location. They have multiple locations across the country, multiple locations across the world. So you may have to work with other people within the organization, IT departments, all that sort of thing to collect all of the company's IPs and add them within these settings. A couple minor setbacks with IP exclusions. First, you will not find them in the campaign settings for video campaigns, hotel campaigns, app campaigns, smart display campaigns, and demand gen campaigns. I know that's five campaign types that you cannot use IP exclusions, so it's limited. That's exactly why I chose a search option to show you. Second, as I pop open Google Ads Editor, sorry, it's probably small on your screen, I'm within the campaign view, scrolling through all the settings. I still don't know if there's a way possible to add IP exclusions within Google Ads Editor to easily copy and paste it to multiple campaigns at once. To my knowledge, that has never been an option. But if I'm wrong, please share it in the comments so you can help us out. So if you have a large account, it could potentially be a massive undertaking trying to get IP exclusions into a lot of campaigns. I know certain tools like Optimizer had a feature where it could do it for you in several campaigns. But besides that, I only know how to do it by going campaign to campaign. So if you can get these exclusions from users within the company, we strongly recommend implementing them. But it's also important to educate your client about why it's important to add these exclusions so they don't freak out why they're not seeing their ads anymore. Similar to this type of exclusion, we have location exclusions. Let me close this window and then we'll scoot up to locations. Whether you're creating a campaign or editing a current one, probably noticed over the years that location targeting isn't as specific as it used to be. That's because when we look at the location options, the default option will be this first one, presence or interest. Of course, that's what Google recommends. Expand your reach beyond the location targeting that you actually wanted. So people who are in, regularly in, or have shown interest within your targeting locations, well, that's going to expand your reach. Even the more specific one, presence, people who may be regularly in your targeted locations. Not horrible, but when we have this setting, especially clients of ours that are international, we see a lot of other locations showing up in our geographic reports that we don't want to see. So location exclusions are very important. Literally while I'm recording this video, had a client scenario just this morning that really kind of speaks to this. One of their offices in a different country was seeing our ads that are from the United States account. We double checked all the location options for every single campaign. To our knowledge, that person from another country wasn't visiting the United States regularly. There is a chance, which I can't prove because I don't know this person, that the location settings within their Chrome browser allowed for this to happen. That's fine, but we still don't want this to happen. 
So yes, we could try to work on this with IP exclusions, but if this happened to one person, odds are it can happen again to a lot of other people. So we're gonna look at adding location exclusions. In your case, go up to enter another location. We can start typing in this location. And then as you're typing in a location, you can click exclude. Now, when I did this, it canceled out my original option. So I'm gonna go back up, add United States and target this country. And then I would keep on going. And if you go to advanced search, here's where you can paste in a list of countries, cities, zip codes, whatever. I'll do one example. No, oh, wait, sorry, forgot I have to click add in bulk first. Then I could paste it in, click search. It matched the list of all 27 countries. I can exclude every single one individually or click exclude all. Be very, very careful when you're typing in cities or zip codes. That is because there are duplicates, sometimes within the same country or even around the world. So make sure that you're not targeting or excluding any incorrect ones. But from the country level, it's a lot easier. Exclude all of these. So now, even though we did everything right from the campaign settings portion of location targeting, we're doing as much as we can to try to exclude other countries from seeing our United States ads. This is our demo account, but why the heck not? Let's save it. And there we see our updated location targeting settings with exclusions included. For the next option, I'm gonna click out of this. So once we're done, I know I saved everything. We can X out of this. And then I'm gonna go into a different campaign type. We see it's a video campaign. I'm starting here for a reason. That's because if you have older YouTuber display campaigns, you still may see these content exclusion settings within your campaign settings. But in many accounts, this area has changed and it's in a different location within the account. From the account level, go to tools, and there you will see content suitability. If you don't want your ads to appear alongside certain videos, websites, apps, you can try to limit exposure on those placements as much as possible. And there are a few sections to this area. First, we have inventory type. And there we see the three different breakdowns. Standard will be your default. And then you see what type of content is considered within each inventory. Pretty much show me on the most as possible, more restrictions added in, and then the most restricted inventory option. You can click down and there we see other options for sensitive content. We've already checked all of these to try to block it as much as possible. We expand other options. If you wanna exclude by specific content labels, more types of placements. If you wanna block out certain themes from where your ads are gonna be shown. Like, I don't want my ads to be shown anywhere near politics or religion. Boom, check those, let's save that one. Now here we have content keywords just for a YouTuber display. I just typed in a few examples there. But even within these networks, it's not as specific as you think. So content keywords don't work with YouTube Shorts. Content keywords don't work with the YouTube Home Feed. Now that Gmail has rolled into Discovery, has rolled into Demand Gen, content keywords don't work for Gmail ad placements. Not perfect, but better than nothing. And then we see excluded placements. Because this is the fourth type of placement that we really like to exclude. And we separate it on its own because we think it's a much bigger category and we get more information to really assess placement performance. So content suitability, wrapping this one up, is another place where we can see placement performance. But first I wanna head back to the campaign view and then going over, we see insights and reports. If we expand that, we can look at when and where ads showed. I have a large date range. It's gonna go by day and hour by default but we're looking at when ads showed. We need to go to where they showed. So we see certain placements here. We get mobile app placements, YouTube channels, other websites, and a variety of columns that we can edit with this button here to really assess performance. And whatever you consider success, that's totally up to you. I'm not gonna get into what you should be looking at here. That's gonna be different for every single account, but I can almost guarantee you're gonna find a ton of stuff in here that is just junk, or even though it's a legit website, like this radio station, it may not fit with your target audience or you just may not want your ad there in general. You can always click next to a placement, go to edit, and then exclude it from your ad group or campaign. If we go over to tools, go to shared library, you can look at exclusion lists. <gasps> the last one showed up first. Oh well, we'll get to that one. But we're still on placement exclusion lists. And you can create a new list. And here's one way to get proactive. This is gonna be a very basic example, but let's pretend I'm trying to sell some software only for enterprise businesses. Some of my targeting options that I choose, depending on my budget and what type of reach that I have, might be more generic to all businesses. That's okay, whatever you're testing. However, I can proactively type in a keyword of an audience I don't wanna get in front of, and that would be small businesses. If we click on the options here, I can see a variety of YouTube channels about small businesses, and I can block all of them if I want to because I'm not trying to reach small businesses, but there's a good chance with some of my more generic targeting option that these placements will show my ads. I'm not blocking out the user, I'm blocking out where my ads are being shown. Same thing with YouTube videos. 
ton of small business ones, and some of them look like junk too. They may have to look into certain websites. Small business, there you go. I may want to exclude that proactively. And then certain apps that talk about small business. Again, a pretty generic example, but you get the point. Proactively look at placements related to your targeting options that you may not want your ads to appear on, but you know with who you're targeting, there's a good chance they could. Do this before any of your YouTube or display campaigns go live. You're going to have a much better start launching your campaign than waiting to assess the where your ad showed report. And of course, the main one, negative keywords. Heading back to campaigns so I can pull open my insights and reports. And there we see the search terms report. This is our demo account, so we've really only promoted videos here. But we know search is the most common type of campaign within Google. It's got the deepest intent. And reviewing your search terms report to add negative keywords is still extremely important. It's just more difficult now that Google suppresses the search terms report and we don't get to see everything. However, with the push of broad match and Google getting a little bit more loose with how they're matching the search terms with your keywords, we do not change the frequency on how often we review our search terms reports for our clients. One column I would definitely add would be the keyword column. I'm going to apply this. I know the keywords over there and it says content again. This is just our demo account, but we always compare what keyword we're actually targeting with what Google is relating it to. And you're going to find some pretty big discrepancies. Guarantee it. Just like the placement report, you can always select a search term. You can add it as a negative keyword. You can add it at the ad group level, campaign level, or add it to a negative keyword list. So that's when you'd head back to your tools, go to your exclusion list again. And here we have negative keyword lists. One thing we do is like to set up an account wide negative list, add it to every single campaign that we create. These are the keywords that will never be applicable to our account. So when you go within a negative keyword list, you will see some examples. If you're not giving anything away for free, block out those searches. If people are trying to look to log in. Maybe they're already customers and you don't want to show them unless you're running a competitor's campaign and you want to get in front of people who are trying to log into your competitor's program, then maybe you don't want to exclude this. It's going to be different for every account. And then we see the section below is how you can apply to each individual campaign. Just like display, there is a way that we can get a little bit proactive when researching negative keywords. Go up to planning and start looking at your keyword planner. When we try to look for new keywords, type in some of the options you already have within your account. Click get results. Just by typing in enterprise business software, Google's already been recommending with the second option, small business. Exactly my point. If this is how Google is recommending it when you're trying to add new keywords, think of how they're showing your ads to other potential search terms if they think this is related. So if this is what Google is recommending you to also target, find all the ones that don't make sense. More small business ones. I don't know, maybe it's a different type of software that doesn't make sense. Again, just one example. Take the ones with big search volume and start adding these as different exclusions within your account. Those are the five main ways that we consistently use exclusions within our clients' Google Ads accounts. I know there's more we can talk about, but I want to give you the opportunity. Besides the five that we mentioned, what are other ways you like to exclude irrelevant users within your clients' accounts? Let us know in the comments below, but also feel free to ask any questions about anything that we talked about in this video. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the super thanks button.